So hi guys and welcome to something I'm kind of trying, uh, something new, um, mainly as an offline or recording thing for YouTube, uh, is some retro games from the NES, Master System, etc, etc. Uh, some of those I might stream as well at other points, but this particular uh, recording and set of recordings that I'm looking to do for uh, YouTube involves retro games using cheats. Some people like playing solo, you know, single player games with cheats. I quite like it. If you do too, that's great. If you don't, you know, I've got plenty of other videos where I'm not going to be doing that, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, so the first game we're going to try that out with, uh, this is Abadox. Um, kind of a shoot 'em up type game, if I remember rightly, uh, from the old Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, what do we do here? We have to, so for this we have to do this, we have to press A, A, up, B, B, down, A, B. And when the game starts, so, we should be invincible now. So there we are, uh, we're a little man in space. Shooting at eyeballs and other such items. Yeah, there we are. I can see that we are indeed invincible. So why am I playing this like this? Well, first of all, because I, I quite like the idea of finishing some games. And uh, there are a lot of old games that I'm never going to finish. And that are never going to make for a great stream. So because of that, I thought to myself, well, why not do... Some of the more difficult games, in particular shoot 'em ups that I've never, never been particularly great at. Why not play them in a way that I can enjoy, and where you could actually see where the game goes? So that's what we're doing now. This is actually a fairly simple game. I mean, Abadox. It's uh, much like many of the other side-scrolling shoot 'em ups over the years. Ah, we've got a bony dog. Surely he would just eat himself, I don't know. You would think he would just eat himself. Why bother chasing around eating other people when he's got plenty of dogs... Dogs? Plenty of bones to eat there. Unless he doesn't like eating his own bones, I suppose. Not many do. Hang on, just turn my mic so I've got a slightly more comfortable seating position. Looks like we got bones sticking out of the ground. He's boning the, the whole place, he's just boning it. Whoever this is, it's some kind of bone dragon? I don't know. It doesn't matter, it can't kill me. Because I'm cheating! <laughs> Shouldn't be proud of that really, should I? But we're just having a bit of fun, as I say. Uh, finishing some games that I might not otherwise ever be able to finish. Uh, that might otherwise not be particularly great on stream. The main thing I'm finding a problematic with these games, uh, which you'll find with uh, with emulated games, is sometimes the frame rate isn't great. But, you know, when you think that the game was produced to run on a CRT screen, but basically just hold the button down. I've got a turbo button I can press too if I want. Which basically means I'm just moving up and down and pressing a button. I mean, that's cheat mode enough on, in itself. Except I'm not sure we're actually hitting anything that actually does any harm. And I'm actually, I actually think hitting the buttons myself is quicker. I think. I'm not going to mention the fact that we've got a bug-eyed rock monster. So now we're in a top-down vertical shooting mode. What can we do? We just shoot stuff and pick up power-ups. You know how these games work by now. This probably isn't going to take very long as a recording. And we've got a laser beam, that's what we want. Now, admittedly, being invincible basically means... But, I mean, look at these creatures. 
you know, basically means that we're not actually doing anything interesting. Uh, well, anything skillful. That's not what I'm doing this for. I'm just doing this as a bit of a laugh. As I say. We're going to get people reaching for, reaching to give us a handy there. Don't want a handy from random rock hands. They're not even rock hands. It's like weird, uh, It's like weird body part, you know, it is actually biological material. Reminds me of something out of, well, not really something out of Alien or Aliens or any of the Alien related films. It's got that biomechanical kind of look to it, you know. If you could actually see it through all the flickering that's going on. Looks like we have to hit it on that tr the leading head. Yeah, it would appear that that's what we're supposed to hit. It looks like it's got a head on its back end as well as its front end. The response is a bit slow. There we go. One weird eye caterpillar monster creature devastated by our unbeatable march onward towards victory. Now in some games obviously this kind of cheat isn't going to work uh, every time. The obvious reason being that in like a platform game yeah you can be invincible but unless you have unlimited lives Falling down a hole is going to get you every time. So a game like this, it just makes it a walk in the park. But if I'm going to be honest, I feel like if I wasn't cheating at a game like this, I probably wouldn't be doing very well at it. We'd probably have been dead long before now. Lost every life that was available to us. Probably one. Knowing a lot of these early games like this, you probably had one life. And if you've messed it up, you have to start all over again. Now imagine... Oh, we've got another boss. Imagine having to do this whole thing from start to finish all over again. It's like a weird eye, vagina, mouth thing. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't last long. It's like that film Teeth, you know. Where the girl's parts have teeth. Yes, I know. It was a strange sort of film. And I watched a lot of those. I uh, watched a couple of alright films though today. I watched um, Dragon Slayer, which is a film from 1981. Uh, it's kind of a fantasy film. Um, produced by Disney. Uh, but one of the first non-Lucas film uh, films to use ILM's special effects, in particular something called Go Motion. Now, what uh, Dragon Slayer is about is uh, basically there's a village in a kingdom. I suppose it's a city because it is the the main city where the king lives, um, which is plagued by a dragon. Um, and in order to try and satiate the dragon, what they do is they uh, they sacrifice a female virgin um, to the dragon in order that it'll leave him alone for a while. Uh, this works, but it does require them to kill an awful lot of people. So, a girl who's been disguised as a boy all her life, uh, as a warrior if you like, uh, approaches a wizard, a wizard who's supposed to be able to help take out these, uh, see because I'm doing that I can go inside the walls. <laughs> Not much to see inside the walls though I'm afraid. Uh, but yeah, so she goes, she hunts down a wizard, this wizard is an old man, um, and you think he's going to be the kind of uh, dragon slayer initially, but then what happens is a, a knight comes along who doesn't want him to fight the dragon, well he wants him to prove that he's a real wizard should I say, and uh, in order to do that, 
The wizard says to him, stab me with this dagger. But the wizard actually knew he was going to die at that point and wanted him to kill him with the dagger. The reasons for which would become obvious later on when it turned out that in actual fact he needed to die in order that he was available to kill the dragon. What in the heck is this? It's got like a weird bent over neck. Anyway, yeah, so uh, the great thing about the film was, I mean, it had a decent sort of set of actors with it. Uh, the main hero was the guy that played Janosch in uh, Ghostbusters 2. That's the guy who played um, the kind of creepy guy that's Vigo's uh, gatekeeper, I guess. The one that introduces Vigo to the modern world. If anyone's not watched uh, Ghostbusters 2, that'll be confusing. Uh, but Vigo the Carpathian uh, was a painting that was brought to life. Uh, the Carpathian? Yeah, I believe he was. Um, and one of the things about that was that they needed to kidnap a child. The child uh, was going to be inhabited by Vigo. But the Ghostbusters come and save the day by bringing the Statue of Liberty to life. Yeah, I, I, you know. It's not as good as the first one. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he's the main hero. Uh, and so he takes up the wizard's mantle to destroy the... Uh, destroy the dragon. Blocks up a cave, thinks he's done it. Uh, but he hasn't. What he finds out, though, is that it turns out that the king isn't putting everyone up from the, for the lottery as they believe. But rather, the king is making sure rich people's children don't have to. So it has a kind of more modern political commentary. Uh, but it's a very good film. Uh, it uses a special effect called Go Motion, which is similar to uh, Stop Motion. But what they do is they use motion blurring, which means that the effects look much better, uh, less jerky than, than stop motion did. And the great thing about it is that also the dragon puppets, so because of the time, you know, 1981, most of what they used were practical effects, you know, so uh, uh, the dragon was actually like a puppet. Um, and was one of the best looking dragons I've ever seen. His name was uh, Vermithrax. What was it? Vermithrax? I can't remember the second part of his name. I'm sure I'll remember later. Um, but yeah, so... Very good film. Uh, good fantasy film from the 80s. Uh, uses a lot of the effects. Uh, Go motion, by the way, is something which... Uh, it was used quite a lot in Star Wars for things like the Tauntauns and the Atats and stuff like that to make their motion look more real, if you like. Uh, it wasn't created by ILM. Obviously, ILM was kind of the uh, effects master in chief, if you like, for basically every Lucasfilm uh, that used effects, if you like. So the Indiana Jones films, as well as the Star Wars films. I'm assuming I'm hitting the right thing here. Yes, I am. Um, yeah, and it was, as I say, it was a collaboration between Disney and Paramount, uh, which didn't sit very well with a lot of Disney followers, you know, because it, it's quite a violent sort of film, uh, comparatively. Um, but very good, and I suggest you watch it. Watched a couple of other films today as well. Uh, I watched a Spanish uh, film where a priest uh, decides he has to do evil deeds to ensure that he can stop the end of the world which is occurring that evening. So he goes around asking people uh, if they can help him summon the devil. Uh, he goes to some kind of cre crazy uh, metalhead that runs a record store. He looks for records that play, uh, that have back, back masked uh, audio because he believes that that's a way to summon the devil. Um, <laughs> Um, and then he sees a guy who's like a fortune teller slash, well he claims to be an exorcist and all sorts of stuff, who runs a TV show. Uh, he goes and finds him and tells him that he needs to summon the devil by capturing him in his house and smashing him over the head with things and... Eventually, inexplicably, this guy decides to, to, to join him. Uh, and they, they go about their... Their day looking for the Antichrist that's due to be born 
that night in Madrid. Uh, so not Spanish because it was Madrid and Barcelona was a big part of the cities where the devil was making his presence felt. But yeah, so the guy, he, he goes through just trying to do evil deeds. But those evil deeds are very stereotypical. Uh, um, stereotypical deeds that, that at one time lots of people thought, you know, Satanists did. Just basic nonsense, you know. But you didn't see him smoking the devil's lettuce. I appear to have my motion restricted by something here, and I'm not really entirely sure what. And now we've got a robot, and I bet I have to shoot it in the head, and I can't go up. I can go down. But I cannot go up. Have I got some sort of creature on me? I can't. So I can't actually go up, and I, and because I can't go up, I don't actually think I can complete the level. Can I? If I go down... No, so there is a natural bottom. I was hoping if I went down, maybe... Oh yeah, here we go. I'm hitting the head now. Everybody loves a little head. It seems like something caused me to be stuck there, and I'm not sure what. Everything's working again now. I must have got hit by something, but... That restricted my movement, but I didn't see it happen. Very strange. So anyway, yeah, um, something I like doing. I'm watching a lot of um, B-movies and uh, cheaply shot movies. Uh, some of which I will mention on my Twitter page. Just a quick review of some of them. Um... Usually just the weird ones, you know, I like... Um, I can't shoot. Oh, now I can. Something happened there that made me stop shooting. Which was weird. Ooh, a little bit of a headache there, sorry. <laughs> it's probably because I'm playing a game... ...that's meant to go on a CRT screen and has a horribly flickering motion. Honestly, if uh, I should apologise to anyone who has epilepsy, and I will make sure that when I upload this to YouTube, I do put an epilepsy warning at the beginning. Because um, I feel like that's uh, in the title, should I say. Because I feel like this could do you some serious harm if you're watching this game. But yes, yeah, so this is Abidox. I don't know how, how many levels this has. It might not take me very much longer to get through this game. Oh, here we go, Luke. Can't shoot. Stuck. Gummed up with something. That's what I was afraid of. With this, I suppose the good news, the good thing maybe is with some of these, they're going to be quite short videos um, by ensuring that we pretty much are unbeatable. Uh, they're not going to be extremely long. Uh... And the games are not going to be extremely difficult because of it. We must be reaching a boss soon. The music's starting to change. We can go through those beams. See, it does take all the skill out of playing the game. And I don't I don't disagree with that. It does. You know, but it's... It makes for a, a stream where we can actually see how this game plays through. What do you think? Right, when we get to the end, do you reckon uh, it's going to say, Congratulations. And that's it. Or do you think it'll give me some kind of, uh... Kind of shot. Whoa, we're, we've got ghosts attacking us now, like the traditional spooky sheet ghosts. And our shots just go right through them. To be fair, our shots just go right through everything. So where am I supposed to hit this guy? I feel like... Right, I'm just going to hit the old turbo button. See, in comparison to some of these sort of bullet hell shooters, though, I mean, this isn't too bad, but those... those floating things, considering... 
motion speed. Oh wait, look, we're supposed to be shooting those eye things, I think. Because that one's broken, unless that one's fully broken. There we go, see I just had to break the eyes. Or did I kill myself? No, I didn't. It would appear to be the end. Some girl inside a bubble. No, it's not. But I can't shoot. What is this? Oh, we're just supposed to get through. I reckon. And those, those are just speed ups. Now this might get hard. I know that I can cut through everything, but I would like to still at least try and do the levels properly. So I just went through that. It's getting so fast that I don't have a choice. Oh, we just went through two. Couldn't stop myself there. We got out. Whatever that was, we, we escaped it. I don't know what just happened. Was that our escape? Was that the entire game? We blew something up. We went inside the Death Star and we came out and it blew up behind us. And that's it. <laughs> so yeah, it makes the game nice and easy. makes the game finish pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that one. Uh, the great thing with these is it means I can record quite a few at a time and upload quite a few at a time to um, to YouTube. So thank you very much for tuning in for that one. Uh, or for watching my video, should I say. Uh, and keep an eye out for more. Thank you very much.